And you may be seated. Friends, we've assembled here this evening to unite Zach and Nikki in marriage. The Bible teaches that marriage is to be a permanent relationship of one man and one woman, freely and totally committed to each other as companions for life. Our Lord declared that a man should leave his father and mother and unite with his wife in the building of a home, and the two should become one flesh. Who gives the bride to be married this evening? Thank you. has asked Paige Diorio to provide a reading, so she will come at this time and share a reading. When two become one, next to asking Jesus to be Lord of your life, it is the most important decision you will ever make. Marriage is a contract. The vows you are pledging today before God, your family, and your friends. However, the vow does not ensure unity. True unity requires diligence, commitment, and more effort than you have ever given anything in your life. Nurturing your relationship is purposeful. It will require gentleness, patience, respect, and self-control. When you get this right, peace abounds. And there is nothing in life that brings more contentment than to have peace in your heart and peace in your home. Unconditional love isn't just an action. It is a choice. It is choosing to give when you feel as you have nothing left. It is choosing to forgive when your heart is bleeding. And it is choosing to make your partner's needs more important than your own. The quality of your marriage is going to be more dependent on your perspective than on your... Excuse me on your perspective and on your circumstances. Your attitude towards your marriage is the foundation for experiencing the wonderful life that lies ahead. By choosing a positive attitude, God promises throughout Scripture to renew your mind, to perfect your character, to give you rest, and to renew your soul. Both of you today are taking on a mutual responsibility to submit and to love, to obey and to encourage, to work hard and to be fair. Cherish this moment. Cherish one another and cherish this union above all other relationships you possess. Each person in this place today loves you, supports you, and wishes you the very best each and every day of your lives. God bless. In the book of Ecclesiastes, there's this text. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Seven years ago, you met one another in high school, and it's pretty much been Zach and Nikki since then. Seven years has brought you to this place where you've learned the value of two being better than one. And yet it's not just you two that make a Christian marriage. As 
Paige has already expressed in her reading, there's that last verse, a chord of three strands is not easily broken. That third person in a Christian marriage is the Holy Spirit, the Lord God, Jesus, who submits to believers and makes the two one. And so I encourage you to build your home on that foundation of Christ. That's where the adventure is. That's where the joy is. That's where the, the depth of love is that can carry you through the good times and the hard times. And may God bless you as you follow Him and grow in your love for one another. It's time now for the vows. Would you give your bouquet to your maid of honor? Turn and face one another and take hands. The vows come easy on the wedding day. They can sometimes be difficult to live out when the storms of life come. But let me encourage you to recognize the strength of the covenant you're making today. Because even when your feelings get a little fickle, and even when feelings fade, the covenant will always be there. The commitments that you're making with one another today in the presence of Christ in your marriage. Zach, will you take Nikki to be your wife? Will you commit yourself to her happiness and her self-fulfillment as a person? and to her usefulness in God's kingdom. And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to her and her alone so long as you both shall live? Nikki, will you take Zach to be your husband? Do you commit yourself to his happiness, his self-fulfillment as a person, and his usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to him and him alone so long as you both shall live? Then I invite you to make a more specific statement of your vows to one another. Zach, if you'll look at Nikki and repeat after me. I, Zach, take you, Nikki, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, and forsaking all others, keep myself only unto you, unto you, till death do us part. And now, Nikki, if you'll repeat after me, look at Zach and follow me. I, Nikki, take you, Zach, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and health, to love and cherish, and forsaking all others, keep myself only unto you till death do us part. Do you have rings to signify your vows today? Would you get them and place them in my heart? <coughs> the wedding ring is a symbol of wedded love in the eyes of God. The purity of the metal symbolizes the purity of wedded love in God's eyes. For it was God who created the institution of marriage in the Garden of Eden. Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding feast in Cana, and the Apostle Paul said the only thing he could find, the best thing he could find to describe the relationship between Christ and the church would be the relationship between a husband and a wife. So with that in mind, I invite you to give and receive the rings today. Zach, would you take Nikki's ring, place it on her finger, and repeat after me. Nikki, with this ring, I pledge my life and love to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, Nikki, if you'll take Zach's ring, place it on his finger, and repeat after me. Zach, with this ring, I pledge my life and love to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's pray together. Zach and Nikki, as you begin your life together, may your relationship grow to be built upon the foundation that is Jesus Christ our Lord. And in that light, may Christ go before you as leader and guide, behind you as redeemer and love, below you as supporter and strength, above you as provider and guard, beside you as companion and friend, and within you as Savior and Lord. In His name, Amen. Zach, Nikki, because you have made these vows and covenants before Almighty God and before this assembly of family and friends today, then through the laws of Arkansas and as a minister of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pronounce you husband and wife, and you may kiss the bride. And what God
placed it. It's with pleasure and a joy to introduce to you today, Mr. and Mrs. Zach Harris. Yeah, <laughs> 